of Middleware Friday for November 24th, 2017. My name is Kent Weir and today I'm going to talk to you about new Microsoft Flow templates. So Flow templates are a compelling part of the Microsoft Flow service in the sense that both Microsoft and the community can contribute to these templates in order to accelerate your delivery time and reduce the amount of time it takes to build your solution. So today I wanted to highlight three different templates that have recently been released. More specifically, a ServiceNow button template, Flow Management using the new Flow Management connector. Uh, there's a bunch of different operations that are now exposed and I've built a template around that. And lastly, there's a series of Azure AD templates which uh, we'll go ahead and explore one of those as well. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the content. No community content this week. We'll try to pick that up in my next session. As mentioned in the intro, we're going to talk about ServiceNow and creating an incident from a button, dealing with flow management, and then also Azure AD. Just a bit of a disclaimer, this is community content created by myself and therefore the opinions expressed in the following content are my own. So one thing to get out of the way before we go into the templates is to briefly talk about premium connectors. In this case, we do have ServiceNow, which is a premium connector. Don't actually have entitlement to it in the free tier, but you do see as soon as you get into Flow Plan 1 and Flow Plan 2, the premium connectors are, are supported or are enabled. And also be aware that if you don't have one of these plans, you can also sign up for a free trial. So don't despair, regardless of where you're at in your flow journey, uh, you do have access, at least temporarily, through a free trial in order to try out all of the functionality. So let's talk about ServiceNow. So this was uh, something that was launched just before Integrate, and I did actually demo this in my Integrate session as it does relate to bots, um, but in this case, I felt it was worth it to highlight this particular template and also dive in a little bit deeper. So as the description says, this template allows you to create a solution where using the Flow mobile application and Flow buttons, you have the ability to create an incident using that Flow button. So you can think of this as creating buttons for different conference rooms within your company's buildings or premises. And in the event that there's an issue with, say, the AV equipment, you can quickly log a, an incident inside of ServiceNow using this Flow mobile application. So the scenarios with Flow and mobile are really endless, but I felt this was a, a really good use case for taking something that has historically been fairly complex in terms of trying to create your own ServiceNow APIs or connectors. Um, you'll quickly see how just simple this can be. And what we wanted to do was to reduce the amount of time it takes to deploy these types of solutions and therefore created a template to get you started. So you can access the templates from this link. We'll also include them in the comments. So here we are. Now I'm at the flow template for Flow for ServiceNow, and I can go ahead and use this template. So I'm logged into the Flow service, and what Flow is going to do is it's going to look within my connections and determine if there's any valid connections to ServiceNow. So in this case, I do have a Snow Sandbox that is online, and therefore that connection has been validated, and that's so that we know I can go ahead and communicate with that endpoint. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And here is the defaults for the template that was just created. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rename this just in case I have another instance of this flow running on based upon the, the same name that was generated from the template. Uh, first, let's go ahead and next, let's go ahead and explore the button trigger. 
Now in this case, you can see that this comes preloaded. So when I went ahead and created this template uh, previously, a few weeks ago, I had gone ahead and included these different parameters that we want to pass in. So for example, urgency, uh, we want to pass in one to three. So I've gone ahead and created a list where we can actually save the end user from typing because most likely they'll be on a mobile device when they go ahead and call this. Uh, next, we want to have a business impact and assignment groups. For example, if we want to assign this to service desk, uh, a short description of the problem, and then we also want to include a category indicating whether or not it's hardware or software. So that's already laid out for you. You don't have to change anything unless you want to add additional fields. The next thing that we've done from a flow team perspective is we've gone ahead and mapped these fields coming from the flow button into the actual service now call. So we've got impact, urgency, uh, the caller. So this is the name from the button that clicked the button. Uh, next, we have a short description and an assignment group, followed by urgency and category. So there's nothing that you really need to do from this perspective. Uh, we are going to go ahead and create a record, and this is going to be against the incident table. So basically, we can now close that, and let's go ahead and create the flow. Now we can go ahead and click Done. Now something you may not be aware of is that any button flow that you have, you can certainly initiate it from the, the mobile application, but you can also do a run now from the what we call the maker portal. So go ahead and click run now, and then we're going to have all of the fields appear that we need to actually populate. So let's go ahead and create urgency of one, impact is one, Assignment group, we're going to go with service desk. And once again, this could have been a drop down as well where we can include the different groups that we want to be able to assign tickets to. Let's provide a short description. We'll say that the projector in room 2B is not working. And then we're going to go ahead and say that this is hardware. So we'll go ahead and click run now and the flow has been successfully started, we can go see the run activity and we see that it's already succeeded. So sure enough, we had initiated the trigger. We've got all of the values that have come from our flow button. Next, we can go ahead and look at the data that was passed into ServiceNow itself. I'd be doing you a huge disservice if I didn't actually show you the flow mobile experience behind this. So here I'm on an iOS device. I'm using Air Server so I can mirror my phone onto my screen. I'm going to go ahead and launch the Flow mobile application. Next, I can go ahead and navigate to Buttons. And sure enough, we do see that we've got the Flow button to service now incident demo. Uh, that would have been a previous version. And then here's the version that I just created. So I had the MF for Middleware Friday. So let's go ahead and click on this button. Now we can see all of the fields that we have to populate are shown on the screen. Because of the drop downs, this is actually a really nice experience where I don't have to do a whole lot of typing. This time we'll say it's room 8C and then we'll provide a category of hardware. And then we'll hit done. And now it's running, it's started, and it's finished. So there you have it. We ran the, the, flow mobile, the flow button from both the maker portal and from the mobile application. So let's just quickly jump into ServiceNow and make sure our two incidents are there. So here we go, we're in ServiceNow, and we can see we've got two incidents that were created. One was for room 2B, so that would have been from the maker portal. And the other one was from was for room 8C, which was from our Flow mobile application. So we can go ahead and click into this particular incident. And we'll see the caller was Kent Weir, the category was hardware. We've got a short description of the projector in, in room 8C. We can now see the impact and the urgency and who the ticket was assigned to. So all in all, that's pretty cool to be able to take something that would have been fairly complex, you know, even a year ago, and using a template, build something pretty compelling and useful
for your enterprise within minutes, in, in part due to the templates and having all of the parameters set. And certainly you can take these templates and enrich them. So if there's additional data fields that you want to capture, you're free to go ahead and make those edits and then you can go ahead and save the template as a new flow and use it however you wish. So now let's talk about the next template and this is related to flow management and the new flow management connector. And the purpose of this particular template is to list new Microsoft flow connectors for my environment. So one of the things that I've been working on since joining the flow team is really around the admin features that enterprise are look, enterprises are looking for. And certainly one situation that we see is customers are interested in knowing when new connectors are made available within their flow environment. And I think there's two reasons for this. One is they want to ensure that they can assign that connector to the appropriate DLP group or data loss prevention group. Now this gives them the opportunity to make those decisions before any sort of any connector gets used that may violate some of the principles or policies within the organization. I think the next thing is, is to look at it opportunistically. So for example, you know, there's many organizations that were waiting for that ServiceNow connector. Even I had some folks reach out to me looking for the custom code or the custom connector that I had built for Logic Apps earlier. And it's one of those things where, hey, if you get a notification when you've got a new connector showing up, you can actually go ahead and use that and actually help your business become more productive by taking advantage of that new capability. So I think there's there's multiple ways to look at this feature. But I think one thing is clear is that as more large enterprises use Flow, they are looking for additional admin capabilities. And this is just one more thing that we're doing um, to help those organizations manage Flow within your environment. And we've got many, many more things coming down the pipe in this area as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this particular flow. So I'm in flow. And as you can see, uh, there's two connections that it's going to use. It's going to use a connection to flow management. And it's also going to use, it's also going to use a connection for Office 365 Outlook. Because at the end of this, we're going to use that connector to send out a digest of all of the connectors that have been added to our environment. So I'm going to go ahead and click on continue in order to provision this template. So we're in the template itself. Once again, I'm going to rename this just in case I have another instance of this in my subscription. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run this flow at nine o'clock every day. So certainly you can go ahead and choose this. You can configure this how you want. You can check every minute if you want. But in my case, I feel like every day is good at 9 o'clock. So it's early on in the day. I'll have some good visibility into if anything's changed. The next thing is you're going to need to provide an environment that you would like this to run in. So any environment that you have access to, it'll show up within this dropdown. So in this case, we're going to use a sandbox environment that I've created for myself. The next thing we're going to do is we want to filter out the connectors that have been deployed within the last day. So we're going to go ahead and use the filter array action in order to do this. And the way we can actually achieve this is by using the ticks function. So the ticks function will actually go ahead and take a string which in this case is the created time coming from the connector itself. And we're going to go ahead and compare it. And we're going to see if that value is greater than the ticks for yesterday. And how we achieve what yesterday is, is we're going to go ahead and use the UTC now function. And then we're going to pass that as the first parameter to the add days function and then we're going to provide a minus one as part of that add days as part of the add days call we want to provide also a time format as well that we'll use then to pass into ticks now 
in the event you don't find a connector has been any connector show up in the email digest feel free to change this number to be something larger so for example if you want to see what's gone on in the last week you can go ahead and change this number to minus seven and then you'll see anything that's shown up in the last week so just for the purpose of this demo I'm going to include any connectors deployed in the last week but generally having it as minus one will allow you and you run this every day it's going to give you visibility per day if there's any new connect next we want to initialize a couple variables so in this case, we want to have the connector count, which has a default value of zero. And then also, I'm going to initially initialize an email body variable, which we're just going to use to store the markup for our email bodies that we'll send later on. Now, the next step that we want to go ahead and do is to loop through each of the bodies that have been returned from our filter array. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of these con essentially connectors that exist as part of the result set from the filter array action. And we're just going to wrap it around simple HTML tags. Now, we did have a comment on the blog indicating that you could also use a create HTML table. And that is true. That is another option of, of enriching some of the content. But we also, as part of this loop, want to increment our variable. So in this case, remember we had that new connectors count variable. We're just going to increment this every time we run through the loop by one. And the idea is that when we go ahead and send these emails, we will then have an accurate count of the number of new connectors since the last execution of this particular flow. So we're going to check this value, the new connector count. We're going to see if it's greater than zero. If it is, that means, yes, we found more than one connector and once again using some HTML markup to enrich the experience and then what we're able to do is we're able to use a join function which will essentially append all of the HTML rows that we previously created in this step right here so we're going to be able to aggregate those through the join command and then we have some some markup obviously you can once again tweak this make it even prettier than it is. I think it's a reasonable, but certainly you can put more lipstick on this if you want. Now, in the event that we find no new connectors, we're gonna have a simpler message. And this is why we're using that variable of email body. So we don't have to create multiple connections um, in the connectors itself, multiple connections and connectors within our flow. But what we now need to do is to provide an email so we'll provide an email address that we want to send this information to. And now we can go ahead and create flow. We'll hit done. And now we don't, it's already executed because it was the first time that we created it. So let's go ahead, take a look at what the output looks like. So here we go. This is the email that was just received based on executing that run. And we can see that there's three new connectors that have been added into my environment. So these were connectors that were all released within, well, it was four days ago, uh, as today is the 20th. And so now it was worth it to change that parameter to give us a wider window. But uh, certainly you can tweak that however you, you want and use it to meet your needs. So hopefully you once again find the value in the templates. This was something that allows you to implement very quickly, even if you make a few tweaks. And now you've got some additional visibility in your environment when new connectors are showing up. The next template that I want to walk through is related to Azure Active Directory. And more specifically, in this case, we want to copy Azure AD user permissions from an HTTP request. So we've all been there, someone new joins the team or a group and a request comes into a service desk saying, give Johnny the same permissions as Sally. And then the service desk looks and is a little bit annoyed because they don't have any real way of doing this efficiently. Typically what it means is then going in, taking a look at what membership Sally belongs to, and then manually providing access to Johnny. And it really is a slow process. 
no one likes it because it is error prone and it does take some time. So this is an example of one of the templates that has been recently published to the flow template gallery. And let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. Now, while we're here, let's just dig in a little bit deeper into the templates. And we can go ahead and type in Azure AD. And we're going to see a bunch that are related to Azure AD. So create an Azure AD user from a button by just providing the properties, the mandatory fields that are required. Create a, an Azure AD user from a SharePoint list. Copy Azure AD permissions from a SharePoint list. Copy Azure AD permissions from a button. So there's a whole whack of different templates related to Azure AD that you can actually take advantage of. Also have removing users from AD groups via button and SharePoint list as well. Now one of the, the challenges with these types of templates is that whenever you have one of these source systems such as SharePoint or even HTTP, you have a specific message shape that the template is expecting. So that was one of the reasons why I chose to talk about this template was to highlight those things. If, for example, you're using the SharePoint templates and you don't have the exact same fields within your list, obviously that metadata is not going to line up correctly. And there are some tweaks that you're going to have to, to do. But I think it still highlights the scenario and is still worth going through. So let's head over to copy Azure AD user permissions from an HTTP request. So I can go ahead and hit continue. Now do note that you will require some elevated privileges within Azure AD in order to perform these actions. Not every end user is going to have the ability to create and modify objects inside of Azure Active Directory. So here's the template itself. Let's just add a Middleware Friday indicator here just so in case I have a, a template already, a flow already using this name. So we're going to get an HTTP request in. It is going to be a post. Now let's just take a look at what this post is expecting. So here's what I'm talking about when, when we need to provide a message that's going to conform with the expected shape. So here it's a pretty simple pretty simple message shape that we're expecting. We're expecting a copy from email address or UPN more specifically and a copy to email address or UPN. So these are fields that we're going to need to pass in as part of our JSON object. So let's just go ahead and copy these out for now. Next what we're going to do is we're going to get the groups from the copy from user. Right? So this is almost like our model uh, the user that we want to copy the permissions from. Uh, that's the value that we're going to provide. And this is mapped up based upon our inbound schema, right? So there's the copy from email address, copy from email address. And in this case, we're focused on security enabled groups only. Now what we need to do is get the groups of the copy to user. So similarly, we've got a copy to email address in the inbound message. We want to go ahead and use this here. Now, just a, I kind of mentioned it before, but I am using the word email address here. Um, oftentimes, an email address and a UPN can be used interchangeably. Oftentimes, it's the same thing, but it isn't always the same thing. So, do use the UPNs, which will look like an email address, but there may be subtle differences. Now, the next thing we need is we need to actually get the ID for our user. Now, ID not in the sense of a username or user ID or their UPN name. This is going to be an internal ID to Azure Active Directory that we're going to need to use in order to assign these permissions. So once again, we're going to use, I'm calling it the copy to email address. It, it really is the copy to UPN. Now what's going to happen is we are going to use a loop and we are going to loop around the groups that our copy from user belongs to. Now, what we're also going to check, we're going to check if a member is already part of that group. And that's what's going on here. We want to see if the item, because we're going to iterate through the collection of groups, we're going to see if this group is part of the collection of our copy to user. And if not, we're then going to go ahead and add 
that user, which is referenced by this ID, which is what we had to get from this step here, their internal ID within Azure Active Directory, and then we're going to go ahead and add it to the group, and the group is really the group that is currently in scope. Once we're done that, we're simply just going to provide a response, response of 201 indicating that it has been created successfully. So let's go ahead and let's run this. So let's create the flow. Let's copy our URL here. Let's head over to Postman. Let's paste this here. We're going to be use a post. Uh, let's go to headers, add a content type. Application JSON is what we're interested in. Now we do need to provide a body. So let's head over to our notepad and we can see we're going to have a copy from email address and a copy to email address. So this is going to be a raw body. A very simple JSON message. Now let's head over to Active Directory and for this demonstration we're going to have two users. So in this case we're going to have Brendan P is going to be our copy to users and if we take a look at his current profile he doesn't belong to any groups. So let's head back and find our copy from user which is going to be Jennifer H and in this case she's going to belong to three different groups HR All, HRIS Admin and Payroll Admin. So what we would expect is after we run this, this flow and pass in these two parameters, we will then see that now Brendan belongs to the same groups that Jennifer does. Now just to make things a little easier, I've copied out their email addresses. And let's grab Jennifer and say this is copy from. And then Brendan which is copy to. So let's go ahead and click on send. You can see we've got a 201 created, so things look good. Let's now take a quick look through our run view. And here we can see the values that came in, copy from, copy to. We can go ahead and get the groups from the copy from user. So in this case, the UPN of, of Jennifer H. And she belongs to three different groups. Now these are the groups represented by their IDs inside of Azure AD. We'll then go ahead and check Brendan. And this is before we've actually done the copy over. So he did, didn't belong to any groups. But we do want to go ahead and get his ID, which we have right here. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go through a loop. And we've got a condition. And in this case, Brendan did not belong to that initial group of this ID, so we went ahead and added him to it. And then we see that we have two other iterations where he didn't belong to those groups, so we went ahead and created or added him to those groups, and then we sent the response out. Now, if we're back in Azure Active Directory, let's go check out Brendan's profile, and we should see that he now belongs to the same three HR groups that Jennifer belonged to. So obviously this is a much more efficient way of doing this type of work without running into a lot of um, errors or keystrokes or missing you know, one group out of say 15 groups that you need to copy. This will go ahead and iterate through that entire collection and add them. So hopefully you found that useful. Uh, as you saw, there's many other Azure Active Directory templates in there. So go ahead and take a look at those. Do be mindful of the source systems that you're publishing through. For example, when we created these templates, we made some assumptions around what the incoming fields look like. If you're in SharePoint, you're likely going to have to do some remapping because your SharePoint list may be, look different than the SharePoint list that I had used in order to create them. Same thing with the HTTP requests. You can go ahead and change your schema as you see fit um, based upon you know, your naming conventions and standards. So just in summary, uh, Microsoft Flow templates are available at flow.microsoft.com. There's uh, you know, right here, we've got a link where you can go ahead and click on those. 
Look at these as accelerators. We try as hard as possible to make this a one-click experience where you don't have to change every anything. You just provision it, add your connection details, and it works. Sometimes you will find that there might be a mismatch in terms of the names of fields, so you might have to make some quick modifications, but that are certainly our goal is to have them one click. Also note that we have grouped them by function, so if you're looking for approvals, you can go directly to that subcategory, buttons, etc. And more and more we're starting to focus on functional categories or scenarios where we can start to lump up or group these different templates based upon the business domain that we feel they're very useful for. So areas like HR, sales, service and inspection, consulting and training. So go ahead and try out these templates. There's got to be hundreds of them on there. Uh, you also have the ability to submit your own. Um, do be patient. Uh, there is a, a large backload, but you have the ability to contribute to our template library as well. So hopefully you found these templates interesting. Go ahead, try them out, and let us know what you think. That concludes Middleware Friday for this week. Thank you for watching, and thank you BizTalk360 for being a valid partner of the show. And with that, we'll catch you next time on Middleware Friday. Set the Trying to be the man, you've been trying to replicate it, but you never understand. Bitch, I came from the bottom now, running into me. Got a gun named Tommy, and it's shot in them